the Joint United Nations Program on HIV AIDS and the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA, estimate that there are 1.9 million people living with HIV in Nigeria. According to NACA, 6 out of 10 persons living with HIV in Nigeria are females. While Nigeria's national HIV prevalence is 1.4%, among adults aged 15 to 49 years, women of the same age group are more than twice as likely to be living with HIV than men, NACA reports. Mrs. Christina Lanion, an expert who has been working in the HIV space for over 20 years, says biological, biomedical and structural factors make women more vulnerable and at risk to HIV infections. Because I've been working in the HIV space for over 20 years now, uh, you would like me to really, really uh, maybe explain to you where we are at with regards to the HIV epidemic. Um, in terms of HIV prevalence, we still have the prevalence higher in women than men. And we still have more women being treated than men. And the truth about this is, um, even from the beginning of the epidemic, women are more vulnerable and most at risk to contract HIV. First of all, our biology, our vagina and the areas around our private parts, they are very wide. They are wider than a man's private area that is straight and is not very open. And so because of the openness of that area and the way that our body is, it's easy to contract HIV because of the mucos, mucosa linings of that area. In our program, we did have, in two states, programs for adolescent girls and young women where we focused on removing the biological barriers, the biomedical barriers, and the structural barriers to their accessing services. Because when you look at these three barriers, it prevents women from accessing services, especially younger women. So imagine a 16-year-old girl who is already sexually active. If she goes says she needs family planning, they're going to shoo her away from the family planning clinic. She loses the opportunity to get valuable information about uh, maybe even secondary uh, uh, chastity. And so she leaves the facility, she doesn't get the service. That's a barrier, it's a structural barrier. The provider, the facility. Meanwhile, Lania said a lot of effort had been put into reducing the HIV prevalence in Nigeria while also focusing on preventing mother-to-child transmission. The HIV prevalence in Nigeria is under 2%. Now, what that means is that we've made a lot of advancement. It used to be in the region of 4, 6. And then when you look at our population, the prevalence is not as high as in other African countries where it's over 30, 30%. But the total number of people living with HIV in Nigeria because of our vast population is huge. It is estimated based on our current prevalence that about two million people are living with HIV. We have actually reached 1.6 million of those two million. That's a lot of work that has happened with the partnership between the government of Nigeria, the United States uh, PEFA program, and the Global Fund. I work on a Global Fund grant. So all of these gaps need to be closed. And one particular gap that has been an area of advocacy for me is prevention of mother-to-child transmission. Talking about women, talking about motherhood, and talking about the fact that we have the technology uh, for a positive woman not to give birth to a positive baby. In fact, some of the things that gives me the greatest pleasure in my work is that in two states in Nigeria, we were able to test all pregnant women in order to find those who are positive. But this is not the case in many other states. So part of what Global Fund has invested in 
is to ensure that in all the 36 plus one states of Nigeria, every pregnant woman is tested. Because once we test you and we know your status, there are prophylaxis that you can receive and there is treatment immediately you deliver that can help the baby to be negative. On the program that I run, 99.8% of babies born to pregnant women are negative. She called for more investment in HIV prevention through targeted interventions. One area of our work that I think also people need to know about is our key population program. Who are key populations? These are people who, by their choices and lifestyle, are prone to HIV. Female sex workers, men who have sex with men, persons who inject drugs. Some of these persons and people in correctional centers, I've also talked to you about adolescent girls and young women. We need to target this population and provide services to them. Yet, many of the activities are highly criminalized. And so, a part of our work that also gives a lot of satisfaction is that we are working with uh, various government, uh, uh, military, police, and others to help them understand the public health imperative to provide services to these key populations.